My pleasure is uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Gemma Green, who's the executive chairman and co-founder of Power Ledger, a blockchain powered peer-to-peer -peer energy and carbon credit trading platform. But uh, Gemma's been doing a lot more than that. I've been following her over many years. Gemma's helped set up Australia's first fossil free fossil fuel free superannuation fund and sat on numerous boards championing sustainable business. In 2017, she achieved the EY FinTech Entrepreneur of the Year Award. And I welcome you, Gemma, and over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm located in the ancient country of the Wajuk Noongar people who have been the traditional owners of the southwest of uh, Western Australia for at least 45,000 years. I acknowledge them as the custodians of this land who we can learn much from and work with for a better future. I'm uh, delighted to be here today with such a stellar lineup of people who are in the renewable energy industry and also those who advocate on behalf of a cleaner energy system connected and supported by technologies. I'm delighted not just because the conversation is going to be lively or because the pics will look good on my Instagram feed, but because there's a real sense that if we're going to solve the global problems of energy, we have to have everyone in the room that needs to be there to do it. Um, somewhere in the speaking lineup and the audience, there's the collective brain and power uh, and the political clout to change the world. And not only do we have exactly the right people, um, we're also here at exactly the right time. Uh, last week, something very significant happened. For years, I've been waiting, hoping, pushing even for regulatory settings to shift. And I've known as well as you have the importance of breaking open regulation for distributed energy resources or DERs. And I think just when you're rooting for a piece of legislation to change, suddenly four pieces come along all at once. In the US, um, FERC 2222, in the UK, P379, in Europe, the Clean Energy Package, and in Australia, two-sided markets. And they are, in my view, equivalent to uh, Clinton's Telecommunications Act of 1996. And they will have as far-reaching an effect. If you remember back to 1996, suddenly everything changed. Minnows could play with the big boys like AT&T and British Telecom, and they could challenge them in doing so, uh, and in doing so bring their talents and vision to bear on what had until then been a somewhat sclerotic piece of tech economy. 1996 and its reverberations in other continents brought changes more radical um, and more competition than ever seen before. Voice over IP competed with wireline and wireless telephones. IP video competed with cable TV, which signaled the evaporation of state and national boundaries in many respects. We are, I believe, at a similar defining moment here with electricity, and it's very exciting. Many of our hopes and dreams for the industry are about to be unleashed, and time is right for change. We know the challenges, we have skyrocketing curtailments of electricity going on in many sunny geographies, and we've got renewable energy certificates creating perverse incentives in non-sunny geographies. We have reverse flows of electricity and vertiginous pricing for frequency control services, and we've got rising insecurity of energy and the phasing out of coal and nuclear base load. And we all know the problems, and we also know the solutions, or at least the direction of the solutions. Uh, we know what has to happen, which is load shifting, DERs, and dispatchable DERs. We know, or we think we have an inkling of what this destination looks like, but the question is, how do we get there? We're still missing pieces of the jigsaw. We don't have the batteries that we need yet. Uh, we don't have the number of EVs in the market yet or the hydrogen or ammonia technology we've been promised yet. Um, I believe the answers to the missing pieces will come when we shift our thinking. We have to take our lead from these spectacular pieces of deregulation and we have to resist the urge to re-regulate. Um, though there are those among us here today that think if you dream up some sufficiently subtle nuanced series of regulations and rules, the grid will become distributed but it won't. Um, and there are probably some of us who think the climate challenge is so pressing, 
we don't have the luxury of allowing the evolution of a distributed market. And I believe the climate won't thank us for rushing into the wrong answers, nor will the world thank us for creating new forms of energy poverty and fresh reasons for civil unrest. We can't tariff our way into distributed grids. Tariffs only produce more tariffs. And we've seen that all too clearly in Australia. Uh, we have to collaborate our way there. We need to create our way there. We need to allow markets the freedom to take us there. Now, what does that actually mean? That is a really important question. James Sturch at Sonnen, one of Powerledge's partners said recently, we need to create an interoperable set of standards that can allow my fridge, your air conditioner and Joe's pool pump to talk to each other and the various electricity suppliers. These devices are going to need to become fluent at negotiating when they start and when they switch off. They'll need to use their AI to, how shall I put it, learn some manners, just like our children have to and learn to think of others before themselves. Think of the grid. We're going to have to drum into the devices, not just yourselves. Um, they're going to have to learn the value of thrift and thinking ahead and the value of waiting and finding the best offer at that time. And we, the owners, will have to get those values into their little AI heads. The behavioural values, of course, will come from the market values that the trades depend on. Your washing machine might have to book a power slot ahead of time if it wants to get the best price. And why shouldn't the washing machine get you the best price for you, gentle householder? After all, it's living rent-free under your roof. You provide everything it could possibly want connection, a job, Wi-Fi access to your data, use of your mobile phone app, electricity. The least it could do is find the best tariff from which to choose. The kitchen devices, just like the ideal 1950s housewife who had dinner on the table when her husband came in, these devices are going to have to have the electricity ready booked for those moments too. Devices are going to have to learn to predict, inquire and communicate our various need states for them. If they can do that, they'll be bringing down the cost of electricity and increasing the stability of the grid. So how do we get there? Two things. When we've taught the devices to speak to each other, we're going to have to let them say what they need to say. We need to resist the urge to manage their dialogue. If they call a price spike that suggests a new battery, let them call it. If they call a penalty for pulling an EV out of charge agreement with the grid because you need to run to the shops, then that's the penalty. If there's a negative price for electricity on a bright windy day, that's what it takes to get people to invest in batteries. And with this, according to Marsden Jacobs, DERs can already replace the need for large dispatchable generators and can deliver a large part of the overall market need by 2025. We're going to need to have the courage to go with the price signals that emerge. The second thing, if our devices are going to talk to each other, we're going to have to talk to each other first. Those devices are looking to us, the grown-ups, to create the standards like IEEE 2030.5. The sooner we do that, the sooner we can deliver on the promise of FERC 2222, P379, the Clean Energy Package and two-sided markets in Australia. If we seize the chance, we'll be delivering the distributed grid. If we hesitate, we'll just be talking about it. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to walk into the new world and for all of us at PowerLedger to optimise the market and support our grid through the clean energy transition. I hope that we can partner with many of the Smart Energy Council's members and the Global Summit Network. Collectively, I believe we can change the energy of our world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Um, I'm, just, um, we, I'm just a bit conscious of the time, but we have um, a couple of questions here. Um, uh, I'm just, I'm just lost the question. That's all right. I mean, my question is with a lot of this stuff is, um, how do we make this sort of um, the IoT type stuff, which is what we're talking about? Uh, it's happening, but it's happening in dribs and drabs. And, and I agree with James Sturch, the comment you quoted, and that is, we need some standards, but that requires, well, leadership really, um, because the standards process is generally beyond the market, like at least two or three years behind the market. And in this one, we actually want to roll out. Um, and, and get it in place. Have you any suggestions about how we might do that? Well, if you look at energy efficient devices, 
the um, the reason why we have so many energy efficient devices in Australia was actually because of the EU directives requiring energy efficiency standards. And so it created a ripple effect. That ripple happened to originate from Europe. But in this case, uh, I think the energy standards should well originate from Australia. And so you're right, it does require uh, political leadership and uh, leadership from organisations such as the Smart Energy Council. And I think it's essential that we do that now because the price conditions are there to encourage the deployment of DERs and dispatchable DERs um, to, to provide the solutions that are needed right now. We don't need more large scale generation. Um, if we um, create the, the right standards, the capital will come online by everyday people and, and businesses. Yes, and uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Look, there are questions on, on uh, both the chat and the Q&A, but uh, I'm just conscious of the time a little bit. We went ran over um, just a little bit in the earlier session. Uh, interestingly, I think. Thank you very much, um, Emma. Really okay. appreciate it. And if you stay online and um, um, assist with some of those questions, that would be really great. Sure. I look forward to catching up with you again when we have a less COVID-free, uh, COVID implication, in, in, in indications of our travel, implications of our travel. Thank you very much. Thank you.